Hey, so in this video, I'm gonna take you along to a landscaping slash maintenance job that we're doing. We're gonna be removing a couple of trees from this homeowner's place. We're gonna be doing an aggressive prune on the lower pedlums. Um, we're taking these suckers way down, just like barely off the ground. So I'm gonna talk about the pricing on this job, um, how I think about pricing this. Then finally, I wanna show you a very important aspect of this job where I am actually reaching out to the client and confirming via video every single thing to do on this job because again, we're not wanting to be cutting down trees and removing shrubs and then doing aggressive prunes on things that we're not supposed to. So you need complete and total clarification on what you're supposed to be doing. So hang out with me a little bit. Uh, I bet you'll learn something that will help you in your lawn care or landscaping business. Hey, good morning, Cheryl. Uh, so I just wanted to confirm, um, the, the two trees that are coming out is this guy right here. And then this guy right here. Those are the only two that are coming out. And then we're doing an aggressive prune on the lower pedlum and then also the Sunshine Ligustrum, correct? I think this uh, Cryptomeria um, looks good and the Gold Mop Cypress probably looks good, just a little haircut on that, but we can get really aggressive on the Sunshine Ligustrum and then the uh, Lore Pedlum. Okay, so right off the bat, uh, one area that I have already fallen short today on this job is I had everything loaded up the night before, I had my dump trailer charged up, had all my tools loaded down, um, I, I like to get all that stuff done the night before just so I, I, I don't have to be thinking my way through that in the morning. You know, when it's 5.30, I'm just like kind of groggy. But again, if you remember, I was supposed to be doing an aggressive prune on these lower pedlums, which I need my handheld saws all for. Frankly, the hedge trimmers, they just not going to be cutting through these big old, you know, lower pedlums down at the base of them. This is when I really like to use a sawzall and I have two of those. So both of the guys can be running sawzalls. I had both my sawzalls lined up. I had both my saws all loaded up in my bag, ready to go. I had everything, got to the job, and guess what? I did not have the extra batteries for the other saws all. So currently one of my guys are cutting the lower pedlum down. The other one is loading up the dump trailer, but I've got to get them that other saws all so they can be more efficient. So um, 20 minute trip back to my place, 20 minute trip back into town, 40 minutes of just the day wasted because I failed to put the batteries into the bag that they're supposed to go in. One thing that I do that typically helps me um, to keep from forgetting supplies is I will put like just in my reminders app on my phone, as I'm thinking about stuff for a project, I will just make lists in the reminders app and that way I can just verify, okay, I got the rakes, I got the shovel, I got the sawzalls. I had everything, had absolutely everything done, but what I forgot was the batteries. All right, let's see if we can get back to this job and get back on track. So these Laura Pedlum, just to kind of give you a little bit of uh, perspective on these, um, these are about six feet tall right now. And what we actually ended up getting them down to is 18 inches. Yeah, there's like nothing left on these things. But um, that's why it was so important to call and confirm. And I actually pulled out a tape measure uh, to show her how low and how you know how strange it may look but she was okay with that because again she just kind of wants to do a redo on these these things do grow super aggressively and super fast so she wants to be able to put christmas lights on them but again before we came in here and just started hacking these things down to nothing uh, i just wanted complete and total clarification um that that is what she wanted done This uh, reciprocating saw really is awesome. Um, and the reason that I like it so much is because of the one-handed use for it. Very, very easy. Okay, so as you can see back there, I got uh, a pretty good load right now. Um, we're gonna have at least one more, maybe two more loads before we get this project wrapped up, but something that we ran into that I wanted um, to show you guys. Now the client, um, she had clearly stated that she wanted these lower pedlums down to 18 inches off the ground, okay? Um, confirmed that with video, talked to her on the phone, FaceTimed, everything. Yes, every lower pedlum, every sunshine legustrum cut way down. But I got over near the side of the pool and there was a lower pedlum and it was positioned in between two legustrums and it was acting as a privacy screen for their back porch. And had we cut this lower pedlum down um, where she was asking, um, it would have completely reduced their, their privacy. They have a pool back there and a, you know, a very nice setup. 
um, where they have a really nice privacy screen from these shrubs. So I, I just took a moment before we cut this and I said, hey, I want to confirm before we do this that that you're okay with losing this privacy screen. Since I brought that to her attention, she said, oh, that's a great idea. Please keep that as a privacy screen and just do a trim up on it. So my point is, is just because the client says this is what they want, you still have to be kind of fluid and just, you know, make judgment calls all throughout. If you see something that's questionable, just reach out and ask. Like communication, um, it fixes so many problems. Would we have been in the right for knocking that thing down to 18 inches? Absolutely. That's what we wanted done on all the lower pedlums. But as we were doing it, we saw something that said, ha, huh, man, this would be a good opportunity to reach out and just and just confirm yet again that um, this is what we're wanting done. And we're glad we did. You know, by doing those types of things, um, it really sets you apart with customer service. Um, and it's likely to land you a lot more referrals whenever you take the time to, to do things like that for your clients. So we'll see if we can get some footage of the next one. But um, this, this guy actually started out like this guy we use the saws off i mean you can see the saws all that little handheld saw guys i know i keep telling y'all about that thing but i mean it's i mean those are pretty substantial cuts um and it's done a lot of them so we just use that to get access to the trunk and then use the skid to just lift it out kind of cut around the landscape fabric and then the roots and um, made pretty short, short work, maybe five minutes or so on this tree to get it to get it out. So it's looking like, depending on how much soil, I don't know, maybe we won't have to backfill this area, Justin. I don't, I don't think so. Okay, so we got out uh, two pretty, pretty large shrubs here. Actually, we trimmed this one down quite a bit, but there was another one of these guys right here. And we got that pulled up and there was another one right here here and we got that one pulled up uh so it opens up the front of the house a lot and we did completely burn out the lower pedlum here um this stuff right here was it was really really high but um every now and then it's okay to do this um lower pedlum grows like wildfire this stuff will be um completely uh it will relieve itself um, very quickly so it'll just make maintenance in the future a lot easier and going in the fall is a good time to do a hard prune like that so um, it's been all day here at this project. This uh, took quite a bit of time, but um, this house is looking good and it is ready for Christmas lights. Hey, so I wanna make a quick point about uh, just being careful about pricing those types of jobs strictly based on time. For example, that tree removal, let's say one of those trees, um, let's say my labor rate was $100 an hour. And I said, okay, I think that that tree is gonna take one hour to get out of the ground and put into the dump trailer. So by that formula, I should charge $100 to remove that tree. I don't think so. I got a very expensive piece of machinery <laughs> that was pulling that tree out of the ground. Um, we are very efficient and I have enough experience to know how to do that job efficiently and quickly. And my point being is that if another guy came in there and he looked at that tree and said, hey, this is, the, this is gonna take me three hours to get this thing you know, dug up and cut down and put into a trailer and hauled off. If it takes him, let's say three or four hours, should, should he get to make three or $400 on that project and then I only get to make a hundred just because I'm more efficient with my time? Well, I hope you can see the irony in that. So I would remind you and then also caution you if, if you have not thought about it this way, as you gain more experience over time and become more efficient at doing these jobs, you have to still be able to look at a job and say, hey, that's a $500 tree removal. Like just because I can do it in an hour because I'm super efficient and I have expensive equipment to do it, that does not mean that that is a $100 job. That's a $500 job all day long. Now don't get bogged down with the numbers because maybe it's not exactly 500. Maybe it's 250 or 300 or maybe it's a thousand, I don't know. But my point is, do not shoot yourself in the foot and shortchange yourself on the amount of profit that you should be making for these jobs just because you have gained more and more experience and are becoming more and more efficient. I would advocate that that person should be paid even more. So there is definitely a little bit of an art to pricing out these jobs. It's not always as simple as budgeted time. Okay, so we got that project wrapped up. That took a full day. 
um, with three guys. Now I'm going to pick up um, some limbs in my dump trailer that I was out um, pruning early this morning uh, before I even met up with the guys. I had to go over and drop some limbs off of a client's shed um, because she's getting some uh, new shingles put on the roof and there was a bunch of limbs that was touching it. So we're gonna get that loaded up in the dump trailer. That'll be three loads in the dump trailer um, today and we're gonna call it uh, a happy Friday. But again, I want to reemphasize the point that having that uh, mini skid steer uh, has just really opened this up to, man, could you imagine digging that thing out with a shovel? Uh, no, absolutely, it sounds terrible. And honestly, man, God, like I don't, I don't even know if you. I mean, I'm sure it would be possible for people that could do it, but like we would've been there all day with shovels, or like trying to yank it out with a uh, a tow strap hooked up to your truck. Yeah, man, a machine, a material hauler. It is definitely the way to go. Like if you are doing landscaping um, and you're removing shrubs, man, gotta have it, gotta have it. Man, I hope you found some value in the video today um, that will help you in your lawn care business. Uh, if you did, do not forget to get the video a thumbs up. Um, make sure you comment. I sure do look forward um, to reading you guys' comment. You guys keep growing your lawn care business. Pass it on to the next guy and be blessed. I'll take care.